than what we initially anticipated. The last cone, of course, we predicted 150. Uh, so needless yeah. to say, this is uh, a, a very considerable situation that we've got ourselves into. Um, and of course the full advisories, there will be four of them for the four storms active between Ida, 10, 11, and of course Nora. So we will be seeing what goes on with that. Um, but and here we are. Let's go the hour, yeah. And it's still not in. So it's going to be coming in a couple minutes late. Usually that doesn't happen, but when you have no recon out there, um, I guess that does happen, or they're just going to wait till the full advisor at the top of the next hour. No evidence, they'll probably keep it where it is. And the, U the U.S. tropical weather outlook is out. I ran with the 3 a.m. numbers. Uh, here on the East Coast, 2 a.m. Central, 139.49. Yeah, of course. A large thanks. I know it's quite late for you too, Jonesy, so... Definitely good I mean, to see I've, that. I've been, I've been running some late-nighters the past couple of nights, and especially with the severe side of things, I usually stay up, get some early morning graphics done, so... And then this storm happened, so... I'm. I don't sound tired. Surprisingly, I'm probably gonna be here until about six. Though I know it's late, but yeah, the, this storm's keeping me up. I have a knot in my stomach. I'm gonna be here until at least six, which is about another two hours. I want to get through the next full advisory at five, which is in an hour, and see what happens. And also because the weather prediction center updates the excessive rainfall outlook in. A half hour and I'm gonna have those outlooks done by the top of the next hour as well because it's gonna have the red bar saying this is a life-threatening situation which I've been having it since the day three outlook when that moderate got issued when we originally had the stage six slash seven for Louisiana and that change of the bar to being red I was told by multiple people on the U.S. team and here on the and in general in within Force 13 that it was warranted and adding that this is a life-threatening situation text. And we see now why. Um, we knew it was going to be a life-threatening situation. It's... If there's words beyond life-threatening, I don't know what they are. That... That, that's all I can explain this to be. Definitely it's warranted. Definitely the bars turning red is warranted. This is no joke. This is very serious. Unfortunately, people are going to lose their lives. And that's not something I'm... I'm saying because you know I, I don't I don't want that to happen I just I know that's going to happen and that's the sad part and there's nothing I can do about it all you can do now is just hope and pray that's all you can do and of course as we are waiting to for the handout uh, we are of course entering the uh, eighth hour UTC, fourth hour here. Uh, quite late for me, of course, but that is okay, considering the fact that I know that I'm spending that time, I'm up late helping to, uh, get the information out and save lives on what is a very catastrophic situation we're dealing with. Um, until, of course, we are, uh, joined by a Joey, Jonesy, and Walter, as well as, uh, Nathan, of course, um... And I'm to going to cut you off because they have just released it. Yep. The, yep. The, we the have update is out. Only change. Keeping it up. 948. They only brought it down one millibar because of no recon. 130, hmm. 948. That is the only change. Extremely dangerous category four Hurricane Ida expected to make landfall in southeastern Louisiana later today.
And of course we will be getting a full advisory at the top of the next hour. That will be 4 a.m. Central Time, 5 a.m. Eastern Time. And that will uh, pretty much iron out the last forecast details uh, in terms of what we are to expect with this storm. Um, and a discussion on what we saw in the last six hours. Because of, uh, uh, in the time that I was hosting this, <laughs> like I said, I started hosting with a 105 mile an hour storm. And here we are now with 130, so we've jumped up two categories since. And uh, needless to say, it's been quite the roller coaster ride uh, with this system in general. Um, unfortunately, it's ending on a really bad note because from the fact that, of course, we're looking at this catastrophic landfall, storm surge is going to be up there, way up there. And then rainfall is going to be not only a threat for just the immediate area, where they could be seeing 15 to 20 inches of rain locally more in some spots, but we're going to be looking at that rainfall threat spreading way far inland, all the way up into the Ohio Valley and into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. So it's just more areas, more uh, insults added to injury there. It's just not what people need. It's not what anyone deserves. So uh, we, we've been glad to see that evacuations have been taken in place. We've been glad to see that those who have decided to stay have made the necessary preparations. I'm pretty sure that people weren't expecting this to, you know, um, intensify as much as it did before landfall, though, because, of course, uh, the National Hurricane Center was so adamant about the fact that it probably wouldn't become a Category 4 at that point until it got really close to landfall. Um, and, of course, that's not what happened. We saw this become a Category 4 earlier uh, than what was initially thought would happen. Uh, we're joined here by Gabriel. Uh, you're coming here from Texas. What are your thoughts on what has gone on with Ida tonight? Well, it's definitely a very concerning situation. Um, we're talking about um, heavy rainfall. We're talking about very high winds. And in certain parts of Louisiana, very, very high storm surge affecting the communities of along the coast. And to boot, I was discussing with some of the with some of our people earlier that this storm could possibly get even stronger because right now there's a thing we call D Max, and that hasn't isn't going to be happening for another about four hours or so, and it's got some very good conditions about sea sea surface temperatures of about thirty to thirty one degrees. And it's still in that eddy for only a little bit longer. I think it's still in that eddy, but it's still in the eddy. Uh, it, they currently place it 85 miles south of the mouth of the Mississippi. Let me just preface the mouth of the Mississippi River literally is ocean. It's literally the mouth of the Mississippi River is when the Mississippi River meets with the Gulf of Mexico. That is, there. there's no bay, it's just ocean and some marshy swamp land. That, that's what that is. Yeah, assuming uh, right. its current trajectory holds, it's still got another 160 miles away from land. Yep, it's right. still got, it's still got much longer to get to land. It's, and I think that's the most concerning part is the fact that this storm does have, has been intensifying so much and it's still got so much time before it makes approaches the coast and makes landfall later this later this afternoon around CST, which is not very good at all. It probably won't in continue to intensify as quickly as it has, as Recon's found it in the past several hours. But the intensification rate will still be very significant. And as our latest cone has shown provided by some of our, of our forecasters here on the team, predicting 150 miles per hour, not only at peak, but at landfall, that intensification is going to be enough to cause, is going to be enough to cause very, very significant damage. And I th believe, as someone was saying earlier, one of our members here on stream, that uh, people who are still left behind there is this is going to cause significant impacts and 
unfortunately, unfortunately, as is the case with significant systems like this, fatalities with people who are who have decided not to evacuate, which is why we press so much on our streams, but why we press for people to get out of these land areas, for people to get out of these the paths of these systems as they tend to cause so much damage and destruction. Uh, Nathan, you were saying something there. Oh, I just wonder if you want to attempt the handover now. Oh, well, that's what you want to do. <laughs> uh, if you're ready. Everything's ready, I'm just not sure how... Um, whether we got a shoddy signal over here, but we'll see what, what happens if I press the button, shall we? Yeah, you're still sending a little bit spotty, so I'll s press the stop streaming. Let's hope things run smoothly then. Uh, so hopefully that is over. Uh, that's pretty helpful. All right. Well, looks like we're still going on. Cool, Xavier. Yeah, this is fine. Um, but yeah, it looks like I'm still longer here with me. But oh well. Um, we should get things sorted out with the handout over shortly. Uh, I'll be handing over to Nathan because with Nathan it's a lot better time for him than it is for me right now. Um, of course, I've been up the last twenty now hours, so um, yeah. everything is fine with that one. But yeah, the needless to say, this is still a very serious threat. This will be making landfall in about eight, nine hours at this point. Yeah. Um, and given the fact that it's still packing winds of, you know, 130 miles an hour pressure of 948 millibars, it, it, it's not something to be taken down lightly. It's the strongest storm of the season so far in the Atlantic. Of course, this beat Grace, uh, which used to be the strongest, but that only took that title uh, for a whopping week uh, before Ida has uh, now taken that over. So second major so far this season. Um, and only the third hurricane, so... Or no, fourth hurricane. I don't even know where we are anymore. Uh, 4 a.m. brain. Um, but yeah, needless to say, it, it, it's been a very crazy year so far. That is for sure. And the third hurricane in a row, too. Yeah, well, thankfully that trend appears to be uh, ending through the fact that 10 and 11 yes. don't appear to be reaching that strength. Yep, that's definitely good, because um, 11... Is gonna get to, I believe I heard 50 knots when it turns extra tropical, and it's even supposed to be 60 knot extra tropical. So, no, 50 thankfully, knot. Oh, 50 knot, okay. But, but still, thankfully, that's not gonna do much. And probably gonna be the same with 11, uh, sorry, 10 out. It's right now only predicted to go to um, 45 knots. Just to recap the uh, North Atlantic for you, so that way you get an idea of everything that's going on in the crazy wide world of tropics in this part of the basin, of course. Uh, Ida there, Category 4, you've got Tropical with Depression 10 in the main development region. Truck with Depression 11, way to the east of Bermuda there. Another AOI that has a 70% chance of formation that will be e exiting the coast of Africa. Currently a tropical wave, of course, and the newest AOI that was introduced off the Delmarva and has a 20% chance of formation as it moves southeastward. So, uh, quite a bit of things that we've been monitoring. Five things in total, although it looks like there's also rumblings. The uh, analyst team have added an area of interest 10%. For the Caribbean, yep. so that pretty much makes it a total of six things that we're monitoring here at Force 13. Um, and pretty much in the Eastern Pacific, all you have there is Nora. Other than that, nothing else active throughout the rest of the world. So, been quiet in the Western Pacific, strangely quiet, all too quiet, I guess you could say. Uh, North Indian Ocean, they won't be seeing activity for another month or so there. So, that is pretty much what we're looking at. Uh, if you and wanted. of course, the Central Pacific is doing Central Pacific things and doing absolutely nothing. As it has been for 22 months now. Um, uh, we have a 499 super chat from Terrence Lee. Uh, thank you for your donation. Uh, it's these super chats and the ultimate fan subscriptions that. 
help us keep doing stuff like this for all of you, um, for all 590 of you watching, and the 73.1 thousand subscribers that we have. And it makes sure that we keep people informed and keep them safe. So once again, thank you for the Super Chat, Terrence. Yeah, another thanks to those who have stayed up late with us uh, here in the Central or Eastern Time Zone. Of course, uh, late for us, but I'm sure it's late for you too if you're watching from the same time zones. It's been quite the long night, quite the uh, emotional journey for some of us, The uh, watching how quick this intensified and just the surprise that we saw when this dropped from 9.55 millibars to 9.49 in a matter of an hour. Uh, seeing that change from Category 2 to Category 4 so quick, uh, that that clearly shook us all here. Um, to those that were joining the call, Devin and Thomas were here at the time, and of course, Te uh, Thomas, anytime you see him in a stream that late for him, uh, you know something's up, and of course we had Devin here, and uh, when you know Devin's forecasting 150 miles an hour landfall, uh, a CDPS stage 7, an upper end of that, that's never good news, of course, so uh, that's what we've been looking at. We're looking at a storm that could definitely go in the record books, uh, depending on its impact that we see here. Um, we have a buffer right now on the stream, according to the chat. I don't know if we're on. We are on. It seems to be them. If it's if it's probably from when we try to do the handover to Nathan, but that failed, so I had to restart the stream again. So. Um, you may need a refresh, but other than that, that should be the issue. Hopefully we have a successful hand over the next time they try to attempt that. <laughs> uh, yep, we are 43 minutes away from the full advisories getting issued for all four systems currently active between Ida, 10, 11, and Nora. Uh, quite a bit, of course, going on compared to what we were seeing 12 hours ago. Uh, but needless to say, um... We're, we're going to be keeping you covered, uh, covered in terms of the fact that we will be keeping uh, coverage going on all the way through landfall and after that, so this is definitely going to be a storm not worth putting the coverage down for. This is something we're going to be keeping uh, you up to date with, the latest information that we can provide. Of course, we got recon going back into this, thankfully. Um, unfortunately, it's going to take some time for that to happen. Uh, thank you to Our Future Media for another $5 donation. Um, and thank you, of course, for your prayers at the Southeastern Louisiana. They're going to need them. It's going to be a very long Sunday for them. Um, it, it, it's just unfortunate what we're seeing here. And it's, as I've made mention over the past couple of days, 16 years to the day of Katrina. Yep, today marks the 16 year anniversary since Katrina's landfall, and that is being met with another catastrophic la Category 4 landfall. You don't get much worse for anniversary than that. And I know we had that similar situation with last year, considering the fact that Sally, in a way, made landfall on the, six, uh, or the 16 year anniversary of that one, too. That's a weird oh, coincidence, stop thinking, yeah. That just occurred to me now. This is another 16-year anniversary event. Quite a coincidence, but uh, that's just odd. But you need, needless to say, it's still um, interesting what we're seeing there. Uh, an update of the recon flight. It looks like it's going to be another hour before they get there. So around 5 tw or 4.20 central time. 4.20 to 4.40, my guess, is when we're starting to seeing data come in for that one. Um, let's see here. I, I, yeah, it's really tragic. I know people are talking about how tragic it is that we're seeing that landfall on that day. It's, it's a very set in stone date for people who lived through this storm, and uh, of course, there are areas that never fully recovered. And this is just a su significant test on those levee systems they, they, that were built after Katrina there. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're really hoping that they manage to stay up, because if not, then. The, the toll from that will be so unbelievably catastrophic. I really can't put into any any more positive words because there's really nothing positive about it. It's just nothing good about it. it 
if that scenario were to play out, of course. Uh, Joey, your thoughts as we head into the 20 minute mark of this hour? If you're still with us, of course. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, we are joined here by Noah. Um, welcome to the morning games. For once, you're on the actual decent time side of things while I'm on the way too late side of things. Uh, how are you doing today, Noah? I'm doing pretty good, but we're seeing a major hurricane. I just woke up and seeing a Category 4 major hurricane in the Gulf. Yeah, what are your um, thoughts on what we saw with that? I just looked back at the loop, and we've seen some pretty in decent-looking intensification phase. I look back at Recon, um, seeing the pressure tank down into the nine, 950s, even 940s. Um, what's the current pressure estimate, if I may ask? Uh, we currently have it with winds of 130 miles an hour pressure of 949, or 948 now. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a pretty dire situation for all the people that live uh, on the Louisiana coastline that are gonna, going to be impacted by this major hurricane. And it's pretty much what we feared would happen uh, with the storm. Rapid intensification phase in the Gulf of Mexico and now a Category 4 hurricane with winds of 130 miles an hour. Yeah, just a significant event what we're witnessing here uh, in the early morning hours for Louisiana here. Of course, time has pretty much run out. The impacts have begun. Nothing yet uh, southeastern Louisiana can do now at this point. Pretty much, it's just a uh, hope that they uh, make it out safe. It's just a hope that uh, there aren't so many lives lost. I mean, this this storm has already claimed 20 lives indirectly, so... Already the deadliest storm of 2021, the land of hurricane season. And the thing that kind of reminds me in terms of like the whole deadly situation before like the actual impacts come kind of reminds me of what Saroja did of course that was much more deadlier uh, at least it was his first instance when it of course was a tropical storm but killed over 200 people there and then eventually made that category 2 landfall in Australia and then uh, with this one we saw 20 deaths in uh, Central America or, or Northern South America uh, from the precursor of this thing and now here we are and it unfortunately looks like that toll will sadly increase as we look at a uh, closer uh, in landfall. It's inevitable that it's going to be making landfall in a few hours at this point. Um, needless to say, if you have any questions for the team here, just ask them at 413, tag us, that will pop our names up in orange. And uh, that will help us uh, get that the show on the road with those answers. Of course, we have analysis we have historical knowledge so um, if you have any questions just feel free to ask them uh, most recent question is what is the update on the eye temperature for this thing good question I'm not really sure I knew Joey and I know, I know Joey said it was about minus four a half hour ago Um, ADT is going with a center temperature in the eye of minus 7.6, but I don't think that's accurate. Um, I'm not really sure. And for, if those are, for those wondering, um, what did ADT do in the, in the newest update for 50? Past, and we just got that at 20. Um, it updates every half hour. The same as it was for its previous one. 127 knot, 934 pressure, 
number. So ADT is now holding. Just looking at those latest frames, um, the eye is definitely warming. Um, it, it looks like it's not minus 7 Celsius. It actually looks like it's closer to the positive temperatures. Uh, that might be between 0 and 5 Celsius. So that is so that is warming on the uh, IR temperature. I think you've got it right up there. Yep. So this is this is warming. This, and I just wanted to also mention something else. Um, initially, this track about a few hours ago looked like it was heading towards Terraborn, Louisiana County. County, Louisiana, and now it looks like it's just, it almost looks like it's taking a beeline to that peninsula, to that, uh, I think we, that's the mouth of the Mississippi. It's 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 still tracking a little bit further east than it was earlier today, so a few hours ago. That's just something I wanted to bring up real quick. Yeah, as of right now, I, I pulled up the distance again, and it's uh, slightly less than 160 miles now. Uh, but at its current track, if it keeps up what it's been doing, uh, then it looks like this will be making landfall near Golden Meadow, Louisiana, um, early this afternoon. Uh, let's see here are the questions that we had. Uh, any update on the storm surge forecast? That's coming at the top of the hour. Um, is Iowa replacement cycle even a possibility at this point with Ida, and how much would it impact it? I think we have Ida to um, look a bit into the um, structure of the storm. So there is a little bit of uh, a thick band north of the Iowa, but I don't know how far that extends towards the south. Um, but also the Iowa seems to be uh, pretty solid with this one. So there is the possibility that it might uh be forming a concentric eye wall just before a landfall and the beginning of an eye wall replacement cycle, but the th that won't really make any difference as the storm already is a Category 4 hurricane and the winds won't be knocked down so much that uh, you're going to have um, um, less wind impact. Usually when an hour replacement cycle starts, the wind field even broadens, so if one starts, that's usually bad news. Yep, indeed. Uh, let's see here. Uh, why has Recon been so bad with this storm from Skyris? I think the biggest issue is that there's been technical difficulties that have hindered it. Uh, let's see here, Force 13 has Ida's rapid intensification phase reached Delta 2020 levels. Don't think so. Anyone else want to say something on that front? Yes, yes. So, I know we're talking about the possibility of maybe an I will replacement cycle coming in, initiating before landfall, maybe helping to weaken the system. Um, first, as we just established, uh, an I will replacement cycle would actually be a little bit worse. And the only reason why is it would at best, halt the storm's intensity just a little bit, as this is um, less than 12 hours from landfall right now. So it wouldn't really do very much. And if it was, 
and then I will replace my cycle. It would expand the wind field a little bit more significantly than what it would be if it didn't go through an I will replacement cycle, which would obviously mean more land areas would get affected and more areas around the landfall zone would see significant would see an increase in tropical storm force winds and hurricane force winds. But as this storm is as we just established, the storm is so close to landfall, if it was going through an oil replacement cycle, I don't think it would have enough time to weaken that inner core that Mostly the outer eye walls typically weaken their inner cores to establish um, a new structure. But Ida's central core is so strong right now that it wouldn't, the outer eye wall, if it wanted to form one, if it wanted to form one, this outer band, it wouldn't have nearly enough time to weaken this inner eye wall. So I don't think there's going to be very much of an eye wall replacement cycle occurring at this time, which is also not good that's going to give it more time to strengthen especially over these 30 to 31 celsius waters so right now we're just kind of sitting here and waiting and watching ida slowly well not slowly start intensifying and the only thing that i can really see that would weaken this ida for right now would be land attraction but even then there's not very high mountains in Louisiana near the coast. It's more of a marshy area. It's not exactly sea level, but it's pretty darn close. So, and to put it into simple terms, there is not really much stopping this storm from intensifying up until landfall. So, if there's anyone in Louisiana right now who's hearing this and... You need to make sure everything is secured. You need to make sure all preparations are in place. As I'm pretty sure tropical storm force winds are arriving ashore at this time. And those are just going to get worse before you know it. All right. The excessive rainfall outlooks are out. I'm going to have to start those graphics immediately. High risk retain for day one moderate risk retained for day two no upgrade day three has um two slight risk areas one on the coast which i don't know if that's gonna be for ida of the gulf coast one in the in tennessee and kentucky the ohio valley and there's also a little one over in Arizona. I don't think that's involved to Nora, though, um, um, though I think moisture-wise it is, not rain-wise, like actual Nora. There is a moderate for excessive rainfall in Kentucky and um, Tennessee for day three, including Nashville and including uh, Lexington in Kentucky. And Nashville in Tennessee. Let me just preface Nashville's in Tennessee, not Kentucky. So I just uh, put the excessive rainfall that looks here too, um, so that way you can see those, and yep, definitely significant things we're seeing here, moderate or high the next three days. Uh, we just had a question asking if the convection around the eye was starting to wane a bit with Ida. Yeah, you can see some of the convection, but there are also uh, new vertical hot towers going up. No, it's actually not really waning. There's this structured vertical hot tower, and the CDO, for the most part, is still very deep. There's a little less deep convection uh, just no uh, south of this new hot tower. But it has also been confirmed by radar that this... Um, curling hot tower is uh, shown in radar in the in the eye wall, so it's a structured thing, and that releases heat, which means pressure drops, which means that the storm is still strengthening by this look. To add on a little bit to that too, um, I know it's a, I uh, mentioned it earlier. Something we call D Max. And that is basically the 
the time where it's the best time for the storm to intensify and it's gonna we've seen storms like um I know this is gonna be an this is gonna be an interesting comparison, but Sergey, uh earlier this year in April, Typhoon uh but just balloon the convection ballooned and that is something that can happen with Dmax and it could happen with Ida it usually does with all these systems you just see the storm doing poorly and then it just looks really good all of a sudden really quickly i don't think it's going to look i don't think it's going to perform as good as Sergey this year but but it should still it should still give the storm, help improve the storm structure quite a bit, which is going to be concerning in the next several hours as the storm approaches landfall. And to also add to this, uh, diurnal maximum should uh, now just lead, as it's a mature hurricane, which um, can create convection from its own uh, circulation. It should, for the most part, uh, mean that banding, uh, that the convection in the outer banding is um, enhanced, and um, maybe tiny bits in the core. But usually, when you have a mature hurricane, diurnal maximum really doesn't matter anymore, except for outer banding. Uh, let's Let's see here. Oh, we had another really? question. Uh, it says, do you guys think it would be possible after it makes landfall and travels eastwards to loop down and drench floor? Okay, that's gonna be an automatic now. <laughs> I'm not gonna go further than that. Uh, NOAA 3 Mission 2 into Ida is in eastern part of the storm now. Uh, so that's good. Is it? Hold on, let me bring up tropical two bits. Okay, let's see. So, so far they have found um, 40, knot, 40 to 45 knot flight level winds, so they're still going in. Ooh, we've got another recon taking off. Air Force 305. Good. I like double recon. Yep. I'll go over getting more data for this because it's exactly what we need as we head ever, ever so closer to the inevitable landfall. So, have we got a good estimate on how far it still is till landfall? Eight or nine hours. Probably okay. coming on seven and a half to eight and a half hours because we're over halfway through this hour and we said that it's half of the hour. Okay. Yep, new advisory in only 22 minutes or less, or slightly more. We'll see what happens with that one. Keep those questions coming along. Tag us at 413. That'll pop our name up in orange. I'm, I'm sorry if I sound tired at this point. I... It is, of course, 4.38 a.m. where we are streaming this, and it's been exhausting for many of us, so we're still here, live, um, awaiting things, so hoping that yeah. people make it safe with, with, with those who have stayed back in southeastern Louisiana, especially. It's, um, it's honestly a bit heartbreaking for me, because, like, just woke up like three minutes ago and honestly i i wasn't expecting this to, to happen pretty much at least not this fast you know um when i went to when i went to bed just three hours ago it was still a category two and when i get back it's now a category four with many hours left to go before landfall with many hours of more perfect conditions and 
it's honestly really, really tragic to just not be able to do anything except continue to advise people the same things we've been trying to do since earlier. And it's unfortunate that it's too late for so many people to evacuate. And the best thing that they can do now is try to find the nearest shelter before things get any worse. Yeah, um, I mean, we know people evacuated, but of course the time's all gone. The time to prepare is zero now. Um, so. And just to think, this. When I was going to sleep around. Actually, it would be. About 23 hours ago, we were talking about an 80 mile an hour category one. And. I woke up, got on the stream immediately, and we had it go as soon as I got on, basically, we were going up to Cat 2. Or, actually, no, it was still Cat 1, but then it went to Cat 2 shortly, so I, I've i literally seen this go from Cat 1 to Cat 2 to Cat 3, and now Cat 4. In the span of me being up since about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. So we're talking over 13 hours ago. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this morning around uh, eight o'clock in the morning on the East Coast, it was still a category one hurricane, just basically recovering to the point that it was before interacting with Cuba. Oh, it was still yeah, a count one at 2 o'clock at the 2 p.m. advisory. Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, it basically, like, everyone, like, there was people at that point thinking, like, uh, a lot of, uh, to be fair, a lot of foolish people that were underestimating this thing, um, thinking that the, basically thinking too soon that the forecast may have busted and, that uh, you know, the storm is not going to be as strong, and so on. And, of course, that persisted until the afternoon. And during that time, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and during that time, of course, we just watched as the structure improved, and something was going to end up giving in eventually, and that's what uh, that's where the point we're at right now. Yep, 5 p.m. came. We went up to Cat 2. 8 p.m. came. We went up five miles an hour. Uh, we were on this stream when Schwent took over. We were seeing it get better and better. We thought it was we thought it was a major before the 11 p.m. advisory. Yeah, it's... they kept it at 105, and then and then the recon, which we were without recon for a good period, the recon that turned back because they had a broken window. They replaced that window. They went in. They found it was Cat 3. We had Cat 3 issued at the 2 a.m. advisory. They started going hour hourly. Shortly after that, they found Cat 4. And we were all speechless when they found that Cat 4. And that's what we, they went with at 3 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Central. Yeah, and that's what I we've do. been at since. Literally, in the span... Of 13 hours. And I have to look at the 18Z fix from yesterday. 974. This yeah. has gone down. In. 14 hours. This has gone up. Fifth, It's 130, right? Yeah. 50 miles an hour. And has gone down down pressure wise pressure has gone from 974 to 948 that is a big pressure drop that's i'm trying to do my math quickly i believe that's a 26 pressure drop 26 millibar pressure drop. 
I'm not sure. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna use a calculator real quick. I'm gonna cheat. Yeah, yeah before that, too though, far. Like, it was it was in the upper eighties. Yep, twenty six. It was in the upper eighties this morning. So honestly, just goes to show how much. It, honestly, it hasn't even been twenty four hours yet. Just to also think one, about that. Also, one thing I want to point out is that the eye wall has is looks extremely solid on radar. You have many spots of 40 dBZ at this at this um, height of the radar beam. That's a really impressive signature for a tropical cyclone. There's this little area on the western side with lower reflectivity. But if you loop that, you can see this new hot tower trying to curl around, trying to close that gap. So it looks like the storm is still intensifying. Um, and we, when recon goes in, we will find at which rate, which would be uh, very helpful to get a possible peak intensity at landfall. Well, Arcon, we have our, we're already um, we're already going with one hundred and fifty at landfall. I'm already, I'm already gravely concerned, given the fact that about ten-ish minutes ago, when I woke up and started looking at that reconnaissance mission that I started dozing off on that I really was waiting for for that second pass in the northeastern quadrant, I was really wondering how big of a pressure drop was it going to be. And the fact that basically based on the center fix, because I didn't have the chance to look at the drop sound data, but based on the center fixes, it went from 955 millibars down to 950 within those two fixes. And the fact that there... I don't believe there has been another mission in in a little while. Nope. I believe that just goes to show how fast this thing is actually intensifying. And if that rate had persisted, we are probably looking at a storm that is probably a bit more powerful than we that's than what the National Hurricane Center may be putting down at the moment. which is very unfortunate given the fact that there is still a lot of time before this thing moves on shore. And at that point, anyone that had underestimated this thing, anyone who has been, you know, enjoying their evening within the French Quarter are going to be caught off guard tomorrow morning when they find this thing barreling right towards them. Well, I don't know if we're going to get a, a run or a pass before the advisory. Um, it looks like they're going to start southeast to go to northwest because that's where the strongest DBZ convection is on radar. Um, so we're going to see what they get there. They're probably going to hold it at one thirty. If we get an update statement, um, they'll update it. Or they'll save it for the bottom of the hour. Where it's likely going, the latter. Which is likely going to be the latter because we are in hourly updates. Someone has asked if the eye is expanding in size. No. Something that has been noted about the eye right now, I wouldn't say it's expanding in size right now that it's intensifying at this rate. It's probably contracting more than anything. The only thing that will be happening with this eye that we will be seeing is it trying to clear out and basically become well-defined and circular over the next couple of hours, especially as it intensifies and deepens further and more subsidence sinks in. So that's something that's going to be seen. It's not going to be necessarily growing or expanding. It's just going to become more clear.
And of course we're waiting for those 5 a.m. advisories, 4 a.m. central times to come out, so I'm sure Jonesy will be kicking in as those come out. Yep, no, no, um, I'm currently working on the excessive rainfall outlooks. Um, currently I have no notifications on my phone from IEM bot NHC on Twitter, but I will let you know when that comes up. I haven't had the time to actually look, but um, is there any reconnaissance flight into Ida on the way at the moment? Yeah, that's about three. They, they three. gonna they gonna do a um southeast to northwest. No, yeah, the southeast to northwest pass soon. Okay, that's that's. Good yeah. news. There's Definitely another aircraft to... currently in the system, and there's another two that are en route. Um, I only know about one that's in the system, and then we have an Air Force en route. We have the NOAA 3 in the system, Air Force 305 en route. Oh. And that that's all. There's... Mm, there's no others. Um, 302 was supposed to be in there right now, but they turned back because that plane didn't have... Um, was... needed maintenance and it was not cleared or whatever. Um, Nora's advisory is out, so that means we'll start to see the other, other advisories come out here in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of information we'll be getting for all four storms active. So, Nora, very near the coast of west central Mexico, continues to produce very heavy rains and flooding. Um, they're keeping it at 75 miles an hour. Pressure comes up one millibar uh, to 985. The government of Mexico has discontinued the hurricane warning south of San Blas. So now the hurricane warning is only for San Blas to Altata. Um... So, let's see. Rainfall of 8 to 12, with up to 20 possible in Baja, California, sir, which is, means south. 2 to 4 inches with maximum amounts of 6. We know about surge. They don't tell us the exact numbers about a surge, though. Um, so, that is what we do now, and I am waiting for them to update the cone. But as we know, Nora's just going to be hugging the coastline um, in Mexico, along the western coast of Mexico. Uh, that's why it's actually not going to be a hurricane all the way up the Gulf of California anymore because it's not going up the middle of it. It's actually staying more to the coast side, the east side, which is closer to the coast, more land interaction, which means it will hurt the storm. Yep, indeed, of course. We, so that was the newest advisory I know you said. Yep, advisory 15. Cone is not out yet, but um, let me see. And yep, they're keeping it at 65 knots through 18Z, and then they bring it down to Tropical Storm by 6Z tomorrow morning, and they will keep it at 60 knots through 18Z on the 31st to have at 55 knots. And then it will make its landfall, and then it obviously turns post-tropical before it makes it to the U.S. And they have it dissipating by the 3rd at 6Z. And the remnants of Nora will be moisture-wise, and the remnants of it will be watching in the southwest to see what occurs there. Tropical Depression 10, its fifth advisory is out. It remains a tropical depression. Battling strong upper-level winds could become a tropical storm today or tomorrow. Hmm, 
interesting. Update is out on Ida. No changes. They've uh, in warnings, but they're now giving it 104 miles per hour and expecting a 145 mile per hour peak in their latest advisory. Oh, I haven't even gotten a tweet on Ida. Hold on. So just to reiterate that, if you did him well, 140 miles per hour in current wind, pressure 946. Okay. Um, I did not receive a tweet about that. Uh, it's not on the website, but that's interesting that they went 140. And it looks like it is updating for people. So, yep, 149.46. That is Ida right now. Eleven is left. All right. So let's see what do we have here. Hurricane force winds outward extend forty miles and one hundred forty miles for tropical storm force winds. Okay. This is what I was expecting, and we're going to see this graphic come up. Storm surge. Here we go. Port Fortchon to the mouth of the Mississippi River, 12 to 16 feet. Morgan City to Port Fortchon, 8 to 12. Mouth of the Mississippi to Bay St. Louis, Missouri, including Lake Bourne, 8 to 12 feet. Burns Point to Morgan City. Six to nine feet. Lake Pontchartrain, five to eight feet. Bay St. Louis, Mississippi to the Mississippi Alabama border, four to seven feet. Intracoastal City, Louisiana to Burns Point, Louisiana, including Vermilion Bay, four to six feet. Lake Maripas, four to six feet. Pecan Island, Louisiana to Intracoastal City, Louisiana, two to four feet. Mississippi Alabama border to Alabama Florida border, including Mobile Bay, three to five feet. Sabine Pass to Pekin Island, Louisiana, one to three feet. And this is brand new. Alabama to Florida border to Okaloosa Walton County line, including Pensacola Bay, one to three feet. That's odd. There is a 20% disturbance uh, near fifth, like 25 miles south, southeast of Cape May. That's, it's, it's new, but we're not marking it right now uh, for 413. Uh, but that is the new surge graphic. Uh, I threw that on live output, and that pretty much shows you visually everything that I just read. I just found it interesting. So they upped the surge for certain parts, um, lowered it in others, and extended it now into parts of the Florida Panhandle.
And as Devin said, the, uh, um, I would expect, and I agree with him, I would expect 20 feet of storm surge easily in some places from Port Fortun to mouth of the Mississippi. Easily, I could see 20 feet a storm surge occurring. That's just conservative. But them upping it to 12 to 16 definitely is the right call. So the Port Mansfield Empire Extreme Southeast Louisiana Peninsula is expecting that much storm surge? Yeah. Very interesting. Tropical Depression 11's advisory is out. It's 35 miles an hour and 109 millibars. Depression accelerated.